Franco. All right. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. To start off with, would you like to say your name and where you are right now? I'm Jennifer Bury, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Okay. And you probably know the first question is, who are you? Who are you as a human being? And that can be values, passions, qualities, or whatever you'd like to share. I really like this question. Uh, and my first answer is, I'm, I am still figuring that out. Um, I know I'm, I'm, I've learned from others a lot about who I am, how I am, and I know that I am infinitely curious. Um, I seem to be astoundingly permeable. Um, I love to play. Um, I love to move, so I love to play in, uh, in movement with others. Um, and I've been, I've lived my life with an intent to feel it all, which has meant that I haven't always taken the most direct path and it hasn't always been easy, but, um, it's been rich <laughs> and that's what I, what I want. Uh, and, and I will say that, um, my partner gave a great answer to this question when asked, which was that I am a curly headed dancing goddess. So, which tickles me, so. There you go. And so would you say that there are any particular values you hold on this sort of wandering path you've taken? Most of all, um, to remain when possible uh, in that permeable state to receive what, what I'm feeling and to be able to respond from there rather than, um, I, I was taught in school to really be able to defend myself well, do you know the art of sophistry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So How does that it, one work? It works well if, uh, if you want to win an argument. Hmm. You basically do everything possible to kind of prove your point. And, um, and for me, what's, what's been really important is to keep, go back to what I'm experiencing, go back to what I'm feeling to be able to respond to you. And that may mean that I burst into tears or that I stamp my feet or, you know, that I, I don't know, I yell or, but to be able to notice what is happening and to respond from that place as opposed to from a strategic place. Interesting. Yeah, I am not a strategic animal myself, so <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yeah, but there's a lot of strategic folks out there, it seems. There are. I'm yeah. always surprised by them somehow. But... Yeah, me too. Surprised. <laughs> <You're right>. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thinking a little bit relationally, um, who comes to mind as another human being who has had a significant impact or influence on who you are? I would say um, just about, so first of all, every one I've ever met has influenced me. And- um, That's pretty permeable. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty permeable, right. Um, and and choosing, choosing the highlights along the way thus far, I would say my mother, um, a, a movement teacher I had um, starting when I was six years old up and through to when I was a teenager, um, creative movement teacher. Uh, later on was Frank Rubenfeld within the Gestalt community who 
is a tremendous teacher and I can now um, am honored to call him a dear friend and, um, and Ruella Frank most recently who um, in her work created a bridge for me in what I was experiencing with what I um, with, with the world, with how I, and you said relationally, so that's, I, I always had great value for what I feel, but I never made the connection. I could, I was experiencing the connection of how that affects me relationally and others, but she created a vocabulary for that. So all the things I had learned and psychotherapy and all the things I had learned in all those myriad somatic methods, movement methods, as well as medicine, studying medicine, then came together. And that was a big wah from, and continues to be for me. Hmm. Okay. And I'm also happy to say, call her a dear friend too. So what would you say comes up for you now as a significant event or a set of circumstances in your life that you would say as well shaped you or influenced you? A significant event. Gosh, been so many. Um, I, I'm fortunately, I'm gonna give that same answer of you know every person's influence. I feel like I get, um, the some seemingly some of the smallest things have had some of the biggest effects and and i'm all i i'm still continually surprised by what comes to me in those what i call those parasympathetic blah moments of uh when i'm not fully present to this reality and the thing, the, the images, the experiences that come up that obviously still are very alive in me and influence me. Um, Could you say a bit more? It's kind of, I, I, think, I think the way I would describe it, and my imagination is that for, for others, this is more kind of like a, a dreamlike state, you know, where you're saying, oh yeah, and I was, um, there's a, a photograph of, or my father used to tell a story of when I was a baby and he met me nose to nose, I had, was nose to nose with a snake and we were having a conversation because I used to get put down on the grass as, a, as an infant and left there to investigate. And that still feels to me like there's always, like you can put me somewhere and there is a world around me to investigate. It's like, that's, it's so fascinating, every little <laughs> leaf. And so, um, so is there, are there any specific times that I remember where I would feel, wow, that was a big deal? Um, hmm. No. I would say I'm, I'm just, there, there are moments, I would say it's moments I've had with people where, or that snake, let's say, where there's been a flash of us seeing each other. And in that, the whole, it's um, to me that it feels as close, I think, as I'll ever feel to contentment, but it's also an aliveness. And, and it can be um, something happening. I'm thinking of one with someone um, not so many years ago where they asked me a question and I answered and we were going through a doorway and there were people in front of us and people behind us and it's New York City and, and it bingity bangity boom. And in that moment, we really, as I say it, I, um, I feel chills on my thighs where it was clear that we saw each other, how we were. Um, and, and in that, uh, the whole world kind of comes together. So those moments stand out for me. And they're little, they're nothings, but they're everything. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's interesting. 
so about a different sort of aspect or I don't know if it's a category of, of yourself. I'm wondering how you understand and have come to experience yourself within your gender or as a woman. I felt like a real oddball for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> like somehow that I was doing it wrong, you know? And actually the first therapist I ever went to, um, is that true? Yes. Uh, who I don't remember at all, actually, luckily. Um, but I remember the one thing was that I started talking about how I didn't think I fit in with the idea of a woman. And I just remember with the look on her face, I could see that she was really concerned. And I hadn't thought it was something to be concerned about. And, um, and I knew that wasn't the place for me. Uh, yeah. But the it, it's been a process of me finding who I am uh, relative to others in the world uh, as a woman, because nothing seemed to fit for how I experienced myself relative to how um, a woman was presented and over the my lifetime. I, I was recent, I don't know, four years ago asked, you know, to say which of the different pronouns I would like to be referred to. It was at a Gestalt conference. And I remember I, I said, I, I, would I uh, can relate to all of them except for it. Mm. It just felt like um, a table to me. Yeah. And, um, and, and though I do feel that <laughs> the table has personality as well, I, it doesn't fit for me. Mm -hmm. What about sort of where you are um, in this life process? How are you experiencing your age right now? And what happens with you with age in general? I just turned 60 this month. Hmm. And someone asked me, how is that? You know, is that a big deal? And I said, you know, what was a big deal was turning nine. I remember when I was eight and I turned nine, I was like, whoa, or 13, that thing of like, oh, what does it mean to be a teenager? But somehow 60, I guess there's something where it's like, oh, that means I'm old. I'm really old. But the weird thing is, and I heard Gloria Steinem say this just before the start of the pandemic, I heard her speak and she was saying, you know, the weird thing about she's 80, I think now. And she said, and nobody tells you is you're going to feel exactly the same. You're just going to look old. And that's true. I still feel like I'm eight. <laughs> but I, I see, you know, that's really my only perception of time is that I can see it and in my body. I, I don't feel it so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sh uh, yes, things have changed. But um, I think partly because I love to move, it's hard. Uh, almost did this interview standing. It's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And actually, something, um, this question uh, reminds me of something I didn't say in relationship to a, a, the question where you said any significant uh, events. Mm -hmm in my life. And I realized I had an injury uh, when I was 12, where I um, broke my a piece off a bone in my elbow and um, it required some surgeries. And yeah, and that was, uh, that was a trauma that has, that I was disabled, right? I, I couldn't, I had no use of my hand um, for about a year and had to sleep in a special bed and separate from where I had been and kind of a little bit separate from my family and uh, all sorts of things happened to me emotionally in response to that. Uh, I was afraid I, of things I didn't used to be afraid of. And I literally felt I had gone out of the world um, or that time had stopped for me and all these different effects. And that that has, that led me into being particularly aware uh, and able to relate to people who have physical injuries, uh, illnesses. I work 
ha have worked quite a bit with people who are going through their death process, uh, as well as uh, infants who are finding their way in the world. Hmm. So I think that that um, that sudden shock of being so other than how I knew myself to be, so vulnerable. Hmm. Uh, talking about permeable, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oops, I didn't know that I'm mm -hmm. also this. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big one. Great. Well, and since you mentioned the end of life processes, do you uh, have any thoughts on that part for yourself? Some people think about, you know, life, death, plans. <laughs> I would like to feel it all and be in process until the last moment. Hmm. And even then, it seems like the, the process that I've seen people go through in dying, it's, it's, it's a process. It's, um, a lot happens, you know, it's, I don't wanna miss any of that either. Um, I know that there's, it's possible to have morphine and I, I would prefer not to. I, I mean, I may change my mind, but from here, uh, no, I would like to feel every little, little bit. Because, because my, my guess is that we're just gone, you know, it, it's kind of like, watching someone leave the room or something it's like oh just like that and then it's it's you know it's kind of a poof after the whatever the the process is whether it's a struggle or mm -hmm. and so i don't want to miss any of those moments before it's like oh now gone and when i talk about it i can feel my my uh, tears start to come, you know, it feels like it's a, I, I have always uh, that sense of the end of death is something that's always present to me in my life. Maybe that's what is contributing to my permeability. <laughs> I don't know. It's... Uh... Certainly something that's very present with me as well. So mm. there, you know, maybe a reason that I ask some people and some people I just don't go there with. So I, I like that question. I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. So another question for you is how do you experience and understand power and privilege in your life? I experience it from in everything you know from the band-aid I take out of the box that matches my skin tone um, to the bra I buy online that calls my skin color what did this what does it say is that nude nude that's mm -hmm. it who is nude <laughs> who's nude here <laughs> so um it's an amazing thing to see how it, it really permeates everything. It's uh, how much I've been given. And I continue to learn about that. Um, and, and how much it's, I'm remembering a quotation, um, Wilma Mankiller? Is her name Jew? She used to speak with Gloria Steinem and she said something about how they could have freed, she's Native American, and she said something about how they could have freed many more people, only they didn't realize they were slaves. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that, about not rec my not recognizing my own privilege. And and then also not recognize and then also recognizing that others. And maybe me as a woman often don't recognize how we are um, prejudiced against. Uh, so it's, it's a continual learning uh, 
uh, for me, moment to moment. Yeah, it's interesting how, you know, privilege and ignorance of privilege go together. So it's just the lack of awareness, the self-perpetuating lack of awareness, not even knowing it's a thing. There, there, he, she is, I don't know. <laughs> she. Yeah. So what about power in your life? What is that or how is that for you? Mm. Um. I feel powerful myself when I am moving. It's when I feel most alive. Uh, and, and, and when I, I'm doing that because it's when I'm, when I'm moving through space is most of all when I feel that or when I expand, I'm expanding myself. Um, and, uh, and it just excites me. So I feel that's when I feel powerful. Um, I think you're asking something different though. Well, I mean, that's, it's interesting because there's a felt sense of power, there's personal power, but then there's also your relationship with power in a wider sort of more social mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something you want to touch on or not so much right now. Yeah, and it, it, in, um, in the US, I would say I got to experience that of what it's like to have a sense that I might lose my power uh, in, in terms of just being a citizen um, in the last four years. And the, I had no, I did not know what it was like to just have to the, the inkling of what it's like to not be free to have power that someone else has power to say that you don't have a say. And the, the daily, that's sometimes terror, but at a minimum level of anxiety of, I don't know if I will be able to uh, do, to live as I want to live as who I feel I am. And the, the profundity of that anxiety, constant, you know, to affecting my sleep, to uh, that I just, you know, I had like here in the US, it's like a taste of it, but it was enough to give me a sense of how deeply that can, uh, that loss of power or have it being, having someone have power over you in that overarching way, the the all the effect, the the depth of the effect of that, on how mm -hmm. you choose to 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 be in the world. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of echoes of that um, in the vulnerability, and also what you said, which is kind of like losing that privilege of representation. Yes, just just looking yeah. up up and going, oh those people up there are not like me right now. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, and they're telling me that I can't be at how I am. It's one thing for them to be different from me. I'm okay with that. I don't want that. I need that. Um, but it's another thing for them to say, no, no, then you have to be like me. It's like, well, that's one step too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so flipping a little bit, I am curious how you came into Gestalt. Where did yeah. you find that or how did that happen? It was a flyer that came in the mail. Remember those? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, someone else's mail. Uh, a friend's mail. <laughs> Isn't that illegal in the US? Isn't that a federal crime? <laughs> No, no, it, it happened to be sitting on their kitchen counter and I and I saw it and uh, I was at their house and um, and I decided to call up uh, the uh, head of this program and it was the GATLA program and I spoke with Rita and Bob Resnick and they were really inviting to me to um, yes, even though I did not, I was not a licensed uh, psychologist or a, a therapist. I was a 
the best certification, the best licensing you can have for a movement therapist was what I have. And they said, no, 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 you, you please come. And here's, here's, you are, we want to include you. And they really did. And that was the beginning some years of being part of their international trainings. And luckily, uh, after the first uh, year, or not even year, they in introduced me to Frank Rubenfeld. And that became the, um, until now, this uh, in-depth study with him, uh, and then um, going on to studying with Ruala. Um, and then assisting her in her teaching, um, her certification programs. And, and also the person who's uh, had got the flyer had an extensive library, which I'm a voracious reader and I just worked my way through. So before I even got to the get program, I had read everything, and including listening to tapes of Fritz in action in, at Esalen and those old reel to reel tapes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And what did you find in Gestalt? I was really thrilled by the idea of an embodied sense of self. I was like, yes, that's what I experienced. Um, what, and then to me, uh, it, I, uh, I wanted more than just, um, I'm saying just because I also think it's a lot, is, but where, where it stopped for me was where you would say, okay, where do you feel that in your body? Um, what are you feeling? And then it was kind of like, okay, got that, move on. I was like, no, 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 that's just the start <laughs> of it. Uh, and so being able with the, DSP, the Developmental Somatic Psychotherapy work, Rella, Frank's work, to be able to feel, ah, that's, that is a language. Movement is how I have been, how we are communicating with the world. And that that has as great import as any other form of communication. So, um, that's a long answer to how I got into it. No, no, I, I, that's, I also asked you what you found when you got into oh, yeah. it, right? Ah, so. okay, I forgot that part, yeah. Yeah, that and was so, that was so important to feel that I, not only was I um, invited, did I feel invited right from the start, but that idea that um, I didn't have to, the big thing, I should say one other big thing was I didn't have, there wasn't a way to get it right. Hmm. So the, the idea that my, what I was experiencing was the avenue toward the discovery, that, that my sensory information is, is leading to the, you know, fo um, fosters the curiosity to find out what is happening. And, and as opposed to, ooh, I gotta, I gotta know it, and I got to know it and then do it in this way. Mm. Yeah. Nothing can make me more uh, angry and also just walk out the door <laughs> faster mm -hmm. than that. Than having to get it right a certain way. And to be told that, no, no, this way, mm -hmm. not this way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I suppose gestaltists were probably frustrating for other people in the opposite way, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. If anything goes, there, there's certainly a lot of people who actually would like it to go a certain way, please. <laughs> yes, maybe like, there's that. not an answer. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know about you, but I, I hear that quite often. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Daily. It's a little, it's a little confusing <laughs> sometimes. What I, I think that that's one of the fun things, though. Yeah. What if you had every possibility? Mm -hmm which is also, you know, it's mind blowing. So, okay, let's say, let's say for possible, let's look at it. Tell me the window you're looking out of and let's see what's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how has all of this Gestalt stuff, which is now years for you, I'm assuming, how would that you is. say Gestalt has affected you as a person? 
I think what we were just talking about, that last part of giving me license to be, to let my freak flag fly, right? <laughs> to be uh, how fully how I am. You know, I grew up in New York City, which if you don't, there's a lot of difference all around you, okay? So, but there were also, there was a history of sort of like, book learning and a priori knowledge being valued. And uh, so yes, you could be fully a full flame flaming yourself. And there were certain, there was still a certain way of showing your knowledge of proving yourself, your worth within the uh, society, within that, um, system that stayed and, and I think it's one of the reasons I came to California was it's horizontal you can see out people are doing things and trying things that nobody's tried before because what if it works you know and that really appealed to me that I could give myself permission to uh, and and that that's something that Gestalt has has given me it's like really like oh, go ahead try it and, and then when I try it, there, is, there have been people within the Gestalt community who are like, ooh, that's cool, that's neat. So it didn't just stop there. It wasn't like, go try it, and then they'd walk away. You know, I really feel like from, from the very first people that I studied with and met, mm -hmm. that they, when I meet them again, they're always like, oh, really? That's interesting. And that there's a genuine... Um, valuing of how do you do gestalt hmm. yeah the value of the creative process i think is definitely appreciated yeah so what would you say that you do what is the essence of your work mm. i started writing about this actually in the pandemic and the thing, uh, yeah, because there was suddenly, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was time. And then suddenly there was no time. <laughs> Became the busiest time of my life mm -hmm. um, as people were uh, in such deep distress. Um, but it, uh, I would say that the essence of my work is about, is I'm fascinated by how we communicate and not just with each other, but with the world around us and, and how we specifically how we communicate through movement and how that's always happening. And the, the gift of that uh, information uh, of how much, how amazingly complicated each of us are and we're part, we're this, um, integral part of a, such a complex system way way beyond what I can see or, or even perceive you know it's like the, oh that star you're seeing that's <laughs> you're seeing the light that's several billion years old it's like what how you know ah I can't <laughs> how do I assimilate that and yet I that's so amazing to me that I can see something through time and uh, how, do, how do we find ourselves? How do we find each other? And how do we foster that communication? And, it, and now over these waves of light, you know, like the internet, I'm, I find this fascinating. And what this uh, provides for us that's different from in person, uh, to me, no less than, it's just significantly different. Um, and, and so uh, finding, finding out what's possible here and, and having the freedom to play in this medium, as opposed to once, you know, once there was the technical stuff of like, wait a minute, how do you, what do you, how do you pin, how do you do that? But once I've got the how to's, then it's like, ooh, okay, if I go like this, can you feel me? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Huh. Interesting. So would you say that you feel like you're part of a Gestalt community? Does that mean anything to you? I do. 
and it's it has different um, limbs. There are folks who I'm I feel that I'm part of a Gestalt community that is um, within a group that Frank Rubenfeld began, and um, it's had many different iterations and. We exist still uh, now online, and um, and I feel part of the community that the alumni uh, that from the Ruelas work um, have formed, and that's kind of in its infancy right now. But I feel there are people within that uh, group that I feel a depth of connection with that I think will last um, for my lifetime and um, and it, it gives it means so much to me because it's not something like we've been talking about where I have to stay with stay within but we get to be our our in all our glory individual distinct glory and we're still interested in, in each other and that they were playing off each other, kind of like artists help, you know, you see artists play off of each other. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. Okay. So what would you say that you've run up against as challenges um, sort of during this process of training and developing and practice or in any other aspect of your life? I mean, what would you say has been a significant challenge for you? I think the thing I mentioned about the value of um, critical knowledge um, or analytical knowledge, analytical thinking, mm -hmm. which was how I was educated. Um, and I value that education, but that's probably the first place where I felt I didn't belong. And um, the necessity of finding my way through that, I cannot tell you the relief I felt in, in graduating from the, the school I was in, which was an amazing place. Um, but the, the excitement of, okay, now I can go find out how the world is and who I am and what I feel. Um, Hmm. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah. As I've been listening to you, I keep hearing the words convergent and divergent in my head. It's like people seem to expect, you know, to arrive at a point, but it sounds like you're like, okay, I have a point. Now I can go everywhere else. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Sounds I like funny. that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. like New York is like the place that you arrive, right? It's like the little you are here bubble. Yeah. But I love the way you described California. It's like, ooh, now I'm all the way out there. Sounds sounds really interesting. Yeah, Sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt, but no, no, that I really, I really love what you said about the div convergent divergent, because that is what it feels like to me. And and it is, you know, it's like, oh, I found this thing. It's like, oh, that's a really cool thing. Can I show you this really cool thing? And I found it's like, and yeah, and then we can be interested in this. And that leads you to say, oh, but did you notice that part over there? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I didn't notice it. And then we're off on something else. And that that uh, ability to to learn, that's that's it. It's the learning from each other through um, play, which leads to discovery. I would say that is the essence of my work. I'm going back to that other question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the play is serious play, but um, say what? Say of again? course, of course it's yeah. serious. And. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm remembering someone who I think is also someone who influenced my life, even though I only met him very briefly a couple of times is Oliver Sacks, who's a famous writer and neurologist. And he used to come out here to San Francisco and as part of city arts and lectures. And I would hear him speak and I went up and had him autograph my book and, you know, but I am, was very influenced by his writing and his interviews. And in, when he was, uh, the last thing he wrote before he died, he said, there will be time. And he wrote out all the things he wanted to do before he died. And he said, and time enough for silliness. 
And that to me is important that, you know, to be, there's something in the silliness where we're so free. We're so comfortable with each other and in ourselves that we can play. Interesting. Okay. And what would you say have been, I mean, you talked a little bit about them, like, you know, walking through a doorway with someone, but what, what comes to you as, I don't know if I should call it a peak experience or an experience of satisfaction or a favorite memory. Is there anything that comes up as just sort of a moment that has really stayed with you? I mean, it can be gestalt or with any of these people that you've mentioned, but. <laughs> the first thing that comes to me is I am leaping. I am flying through the air in the leap in that, remember the movement, creative movement class I mentioned? And we used, we had this huge room, like just enormous room and, and we would run, run, leap and run, run, leap. And I am leaping and I am the most, like no one has ever leapt like this before. I am flying. And that, that feeling, comes back to me. And there are times I, I taught a I taught a training online um, a couple of weeks ago and I had that same feeling with the, you know it's like oh wow we're flying together. So to have to not be alone in the leap mm -hmm. <laughs> in the dare, I dare to leap um, and in that flight to have some, uh, to have you with me in that, that, that's it for me. So those, that's what I live for. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. That's like a living flying dream. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. And that, and the, the work I do as a gestalt movement therapist, you know, using DSP, uh, principles then and that I can leave with my love for play that I can it, find others to leap with <laughs> to dare with that I hadn't I certainly did not have any intention of doing this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here I am and I I, I see how uh, I have crafted it um, and how much others have helped me along the way I'll add that I it's all uh it's in collaboration that I am here hmm. yeah. interesting so what would you say is coming up for you like what is next where are you going do you have any particular projects personally or professionally I am thinking about that because this is the big re-entry into the world post pandemic. Yeah, we have to and put pants on again. <laughs> let's start with that. So they say. <laughs> pants. Um, though I'm not sure I'm gonna give up slippers. I kind of like slippers. Um, I, I always, but pre pandemic, I always really loved going to different places to, to experience different ways of being and seeing, you know, how people are and how the world is there. Um, and one of the things I've loved here online is that I get to go, you know, if I was asking you as many questions as you're asking me, I'd be learning all about how you are and what your world is like. And, and that's thrilling to me is that during this time of the pandemic, I've gotten to be with people like that training I just mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you know, from there were folks all from all over the world. I couldn't even see, you know, some of them was like, where, what? And, and that kind of sharing, I love that, that, that it can take me out uh, of my little world. Um, so I, I want more of that. And I don't know what form it will be if I travel to those places, or maybe it's a combination of that. And uh, mm -hmm. I get to do, uh, I would love to continue to be with people this way. It's, it's really cumbersome to have to take your physical body halfway across yeah. the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
and I'm discovering a lot of what I've described that I love is I'm, I'm finding ways to trend, you know, in, in getting to experiment with others, I'm, I'm finding ways that this really is, it happens. We, we meet each other. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I'd like to do more of that. I, I've been teaching uh, ways of doing that on online. And I'd like to do uh, more of that in addition to, I, I, it's not to say that I don't want to get out of my box <laughs> as well. Um, as much, I have a really nice box, um, but I would still like to, uh, it's so, even just uh, during COVID, I've been taking all walks around our hilly city and the it is, I'm continually astounded by how much I find out about myself just by going out into the greater world. Um, so I need that and I want that. Hmm. And what do you think is next for Gestalt from where we are? Hmm. Well, one thing I've been advocating is what I we were just speaking about is I I've, I really think that the principles of Gestalt translate into this medium. And it is different, but I love a challenge <laughs> when I'm free to, you know, to leap, right? Um, and it was a really steep learning curve. And I was working online with people beforehand, but I do think that this translating gestalt into uh, being uh, finding the depth of contact available in this medium I think I'm even though I'm teaching it I would say I'm still just finding out Um, and I know David Pico also I really like his the thing I got to he sent me one of his to watch that uh, he's really teaching like here's a here's a a structure to to start with and I appreciate that I I really think that that's a way of for Gestalt to go forward and to and to recognize that the every you know being be here now being in the here now is like oh this is what's happening now and can we be here how are we here how be we here (laughs) That's a lot of questions. Yeah, and those those are that's what I see as the the future of Gestalt. That it would be, it could um, move with what's happening, mm-hmm. move with what we're discovering mm-hmm. about ourselves and our world. Yeah, it seems I was teaching those the Gestalt online with David. <laughs> it was the it was yeah. the two of us. But yeah, I get really excited about integrating and and adding and staying with and adding layers to things. Yes. I think that this is a really interesting moment of possibility as well. Yeah. And thank you for, I had seen you in that. No. (laughs) Yeah. And so I'm really glad that you uh, named yourself in that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thank you for doing those. It was one of the first things I saw at the beginning of the pandemic that emboldened me. It was like, oh, actually, I do know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we can do this. We can figure yeah. this out. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it gave me, um, it launched me, I would mm-hmm. say. You, you launched me <laughs> in that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first seminar was, was him, but we were working on them together, so. But I definitely saw you up there. Okay, well, that's exciting. Yeah. No, it wasn't for credit. It's just, I'm excited about that too, is where I was wanting to go with it more than. Yeah. Okay. Well, would you say that there's any significant part of yourself that has been left out so far? Is there anything you would like to add? About me. You or your gestalt or final Mm -hmm. thoughts? Mm. I think um, the one thing I would say is that it feels like the greatest gift to me to discover what's 
beyond me. So when I meet you, I get to go beyond what I know and beyond how I experience. And that that is just thrilling to me. Um, that this, this way of getting to be in the world and be with people is, uh, is just what I wanted. So I'm, I feel um, great, grateful to uh, those who have supported me and, um, and continue to, and, and just how uh, even in my permeability, I'm grateful for my own resilience <laughs> to be able to, to find this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think adaptation takes a bit of resilience <laughs> to take in some novelty. Yeah. Yeah, and not get smushed by it. Exactly. I get temporarily smushed. Yeah. yeah. That can be fun too. <laughs> that can be what? That can be fun too, I guess. Sometimes, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you. If there is nothing else that you would like to add, um, how about we leave this here for now? This is good. I just want to say thank you to you for your interest and thank you for how you ask me the questions too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's it's really fun. I mean, this is like Narnia, you know, like I open Zoom and then all of a sudden I'm in a different world on the other side. It's like, oh, that's a great way of yeah. putting it. It's, it's I had fun. A, I had a poster of Narnia as a kid <laughs> because I wanted to go there. <laughs> so yeah, thank they, you for inviting me into your Narnia. <laughs> no problem. And it was really, really nice to meet you. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.